Welcome to Groundhog Day. We had a State of the Nation speech in February during which not a lot was said about not much and nothing really was announced. Now with an economy in dire straits, will Tuesday's State of the Nation, the second this year, be any different? This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield and to find out how different it should be, Ralph Matera, political analyst at Clear Content, and Mzotolo Mpolase, the senior political analyst at Political Analysis South Africa, join me this evening. It's good to see both of you. Is it going to be Mzor as dull as the last one? Because the last one was excruciatingly painful. Well, in terms of promises, perhaps not. Uh, but delivery, well, that has been the case since the past five years. So one expects that to hold. Uh, Jacob Zuma has never been one to entertain you, but uh, will uh, sort of inundate you with details uh, around whatever priorities his government will be prioritizing this time but around. But the point is there were no details in the, in the February speech. It was almost as if that was a holding speech. We went through the whole notion and motion of a state of the nation, knowing that we were going to be doing this in June. And there was some speculation then that he was keeping his powder dry to make some fairly substantial announcements. Well, again, you know, this does not happen in the vacuum. We've seen what has been happening in the past year and past five years. So what he has to report on is something that's been happening. And, and, and ex with the exception of infrastructure, there's nothing good to show. So mm. perhaps that was speaking to that deficiency right there. Uh, but in terms of what we expect, the, uh, you know, the future policy direction, perhaps it will be much more voluminous this time around mm. as opposed to what we saw earlier. Well, Ralph, a big focus is going to be on the president's health, of course, just this last uh, weekend. He was was admitted to hospital, uh, suffering from post-election campaign exhaustion, we're told. Uh, the president, bless him, is not a spring chicken. He's 73 this year, um, which is, if you're going to be working as hard as the president does, traveling as much as he does at the age of 73, um, the, the pressure is going to be building. It's a very demanding task of being the president, and uh, something interesting is that uh, the presidents are getting younger across the world. Absolutely. The, the, the average age, age of newly elected presidents in their early 40s. Certainly, and we have our president in the 70s uh, uh, in a country that required this vibrancy, and there are many serious challenges that he's had to deal with within mm. his own administration, and also trying to gain confidence within in the international community as to whether he's the right person from day one. He has been struggling with the question of legitimacy. Mm. He has always had legitimacy crisis hanging above his head. He's got and legitimacy. He's got 62% of the popular vote that, in South Africa. That is legitimacy. That does in not the view of the ANC. In the view of the ANC, that gives him legitimacy, surely. That proves very narrowly confined in the views of the in the view, view of the ANC, at least from the ANC's perspective. But it's becoming very clear that the numbers do not necessarily translate into the public legitimacy. You can have 80% of uh, the support of the electorate. The question is, are you enjoying the respect and that confidence when it comes to policy making, when it comes to policy implementation? That is what I want to see this next term being about. He needs to be much more forthright when it comes to pronouncing on programs that government is going to implement. And he has to also state who is in charge in this country. I mean, you've got the mining uh, uh, strike going on for about, for about uh, four or so months. You have uh, service delivery protests underway, high unemployment employment among young people, whenever you enter a country, the first thing is who is in charge? Do they really enjoy the legitimacy of mm. policy implementation? That need to be reclaimed. And so when you look at it, I mean, here, here we've got a president who in February was making a state of the nation address against a very different backdrop. Um, we are now going into the third quarter of the year, effectively, um, possibly into a recessionary environment, into a low export environment. We've seen the manufacturing numbers. Our manufacturing sector is contracting. We're not creating the jobs anywhere but in the public service. Um, and we've got a president who's not been in top health recently. What are you looking for? in the speech? Well, <coughs> the, the speech really uh, should use the bolstering that one expects him to get from now the election because previously, you know, looking at February and before that... He was, was probably more vulnerable then than yeah, he is yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it was a question of mandate. So the political mandate has been mm. renewed and really the challenges that were there remain there. The macroeconomic environment remains unfavorable. So that needs to be uh, the number one priority for this president. And of course, um, I'm not one opposed to delegation, but uh, when you <laughs> feel delegation is leading to a, a you know, uh, a loss of almost 20 
20 billion uh, rand in, in a particular sector, that means that it needs greater leadership. And as Rafa, uh, Rafa said, that you need a more hands-on president. And um, you know, one hopes that the illness or the state of sickness that he's experiencing right now does not last any longer than it has, uh, and, and, and basically take this renewed political mandate and actually address something that has been dominating South Africa's economic status. It's been lethargic for a very long time, and it's not only stemming from the unrest in the mining sector, but finding new areas for growth. And this is what this government has been lacking. We've seen uh, the president be quite uncharacteristically outspoken on the mining sector. I think he mentioned it in his last State of the Nation address. Please stop striking. Or some, I'm, I'm, I'm condensing it just a little bit, but that was the subtext. Um, this time, he doesn't really have the law on his side. He doesn't really have any legitimate uh, legal tools to use to instruct the miners to get back to work. He doesn't have the presence of Nelson Mandela and the stories are legendary of Nelson Mandela arriving at union meetings, greeting everybody by hand, charming the pants off them, then opening the doors to the media and saying we've agreed to end the strike. Um, there, there are many stories like that. Jacob Zuma just doesn't have that. Also, AMCU doesn't play by the same rules as NUM, which, which is a big problem for the ANC uh, going into the next five years, Rob. It comes to the question as to who, who really governs in this country, who has that uh, power to be able to talk to different warring uh, constituents within the country. I mean, he cannot use uh, any legal instrument in the mining sector. We know what is going on within the mining sector is the realignment, the historical realignment of the unions. The ANC does no longer have that moral position to say to the unions that uh, let us unite on a bigger vision. There are different versions of what mm. constitute the good in this country and the NC has to make a case. So you need the president who is going to be talking beyond those technicalities, but he needs to be able to be seen reaching out. You cannot underestimate or continue to undermine AMQSA Union. You have to talk to them. You can cry as much as you want about the, the, the glory days of NUM when there used to be peace within the mining sector of the unions. Those are gone. There is a realignment. You need a new strategy. And you need to talk or think beyond rhetoric. You need strategies. Campaigns are done now. Let us see strategies. Let us see some technical intervention coming on resolving this issue. Okay. That's the wish list. Will it happen? Sadly, <laughs> sadly no. Um, uh, the attitude that we've seen with this uh, greater unionization and competition uh, between unions is that uh, this realignment has not really uh, meant a realignment of how we relate to labor in this country. And indeed, for instance, business will say that labor needs to be transformed. That's part of a wider argument that needs to happen at a later stage. But that very alignment that says you do not have ANC affiliated unions uh, you know, running the show, therefore the ANC will not necessarily, or the ANC government will not necessarily get its way. Uh, wh whether it will happen or not, well, it really depends on the political will. What we've seen with Ngwako Ramatlodi, albeit uh, the short period that he's had, is that he has shown a willingness, but basically has thrown up his arms and saying, or, this is or, He's either shown a willingness or he's shown a fundamental misunderstanding of what's really going on. Well, and either then he's being badly advised and then the department's got a bigger problem than it thought it had. Well, that's expected. We work with imperfect information and this sort of thing. And, okay. and, and of course, if you have the political will, that is much more important. Indeed, okay. you will you'll get acquainted with the situation on the ground and perhaps you'll realize it's more dire than it actually... And more complicated. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. certainly. And this is what uh, the, the minerals minister has come to realize. So how does the president then tackle this in the speech? Because how does the president stand up on a public platform when the person he has appointed to sort out the problem has walked away from the problem. Gone. You must be kidding. I'm not going to that place again. Those people scare me. Lots of angry people on both sides of the divide. Um, you know, he, the spin doctors have put it slightly differently. But the mines minister won't go there. Why should the president? Well, this vacuum that we've yeah. been having with Susan Shabango previously, Absolutely. well, one would expect it, it will persist if this is the attitude or this is what it takes for Ngwakura Matloti to give up. It's still early days. Uh, and indeed, again, you know, I think it goes to this realignment because uh, it was very easy to have this sort of, I'll say, unstable peace that you had uh, in the mining sector with Noom at the helm in the mm. mining environment, is that uh, it was easy to sort of do backroom deals and then have mm. Noom galvanize support and, and sort of, you know, yeah. maintain the peace, as it were. So it seems as if they do not understand, uh, <clears throat> now that they've been pushed out of that space, they do not understand how to handle the sector anymore. One minute each, realistically, the top three things that will tell you that this is a good state of the nation address. Absorb you first. Well, 
fundamentally, we have problems that we're facing right now. Forget the future vision. What are you going to do to address what we're already facing? As I said earlier on, a lethargic economy uh, and of course uh, uh, this volatile sector. What will you do with our present problems? And indeed, social expectations have come to increase and of course the vision that we have for the next five years ought to address this you know what we've seen transpire water sanitation and all of mm -hmm. these sort of things speak to increasing social expectations what will the ANC government do and and lastly just basically uh, a greater reach between those who govern and those who are governed those are the three vital things that I expect from the speech no, would, you, would you hope to get from yes the you yes. don't expect them do you I expect them well, well I hope. <laughs> you hope, I hope to expect right, them so, so, yeah. um, uh, you can't say ditto uh, but I'm sure those are on your list as well three more for me it doesn't matter what policy you have in place what you need to do is to try to reclaim a stable environment for policy implementation get different constituencies to talk to deal with the mining problem because it's going to go into the metal sector it's becoming very clear the fractures are very deep you need to be able to strike a non-partisan conversation with these constituents including the unions doesn't matter what policy you have safety and security as well stability at local government that's very much important for the president you need a word on that maybe you even need another much more of a technical intervention on what you what are you going to do we got at local, Gordon. He'll at local government Mm. Well, <laughs> I, I hope so. I hope yeah. I hope he, he, he will be able to deal with Can it. Can I put a, the, a new head of the NPA, one that is not uh, partisan, on your list? Disaster at the NPA. You really, oh. I mean, I don't know how to put it, uh, Bruce. This is a disaster. Confidence problem at the NPA. You really need to overhaul the NPA. There are certain people at the NPA, they've become part of the problem too long. They need to go, perhaps. Mm. Absolutely right. Let's go leave it there. Ralph Matira, political analyst at Clear Content, and Mzo Tolo Mpolasi, who is a senior political analyst at Political Analysis South Africa. Those are some of the thorny issues with which the president is grappling ahead of the State of the Nation address. He'll be delivering that on Tuesday evening. And by the end of that, we'll have any, an idea as to whether or not any of these two gentlemen's concerns have been taken heed of at all. Mac Maharaj, I hope you're taking notes, so maybe you just PVR'd it. Thanks very much for watching. Until tomorrow, good night and goodbye.